Hey guys, JJ here. In this video, we are going to be building a tool that converts a YouTube video into an SEO optimized blog article really quickly and very accurately. We're going to be using two tools for this. BuildShip, which is an AI generated workflow API creator, and then Bubble for our front end creation. Okay, we'll be connecting the two together and creating a lot of the functionality in BuildShip and then connecting on the front end with Bubble. So let's get started by going to buildship.app and create a free account there. Once you have a free account, you're going to be within the API builder. All right. And once you're in the API builder, we're going to go to the bottom left hand corner and see templates. Now, you can already see that there's a lot of awesome templates already pre built for you. And one of the things I love about BuildShip is their node based fashions and the ability to integrate pre built nodes into your workflows that are already kind of set up for you. Right. It makes things so much faster. And one of the reasons why this tutorial is going to be so fast and enable you to build this functionality so fast is because they pre-built a lot of this for us already. So let's go back to our templates and we're going to search for the YouTube generator template. All right. So we're going to click on that and it's going to build it for us. All right. So right away, you could see that we have most of this built, which is really cool. But now we're going to add our own secret sauce to it. And I'm going to explain what each node is doing step by step. So the first node is where we're setting up our own API. Okay. We're configuring our path and we're setting up the method that we want to use in the API. Now for this, we are going to be using a Git method because that's how we're going to be calling it from bubble is by using a Git. Okay. And if I go to this little icon up here, I can see that I have the endpoint URL. And so I'm going to copy that endpoint URL, just copy like that. Right. And then I'm going to go into a bubble application. And it could be any bubble application that you want to be using to build this blog connector. And in bubble, we're going to have an input for entering the YouTube URL, an input for uploading an image, and then a create button, which then calls this API, create returns the data, creates the workflow and shows the blog in the front end. Okay. So once you're in bubble, go in and install the API connector. Then we're going to expand and we're going to create a new API. We don't need to worry about any shared headers for now. We're just going to add another API call. And this is going to be our build ship YouTube generator, right? It's going to be a Git as we've outlined in build ship already. And we're going to copy and paste the URL that we have there. Okay. So just from a general sense, this is far from complete. But what this is essentially saying is when we go to run this API call or hit this API call, it's going to go and run this workflow that we're building here. Okay, that's the gist of that API. So we have this API call and this URL, right? Now, one of the things that we need to do is we need to make it so we can send a video URL of a YouTube video within this API call. So we could take that video URL and convert it into a blog article, right? And so in order to do that, we use a node card called Git Query Parameter. And essentially all that's doing is it's taking the key that you outlined and it's returning it, the value of that, okay? What we need to do is we need to go back into our bubble app and we need to send a key and a value along with this, all right? And so we're gonna have a quotation mark because that's what we always do when we add parameters for the first time. And so the key that we're gonna have is URL because that is what we've outlined right here. Query key, it means URL. And now the value equals and then in bubble, we need to use our brackets for dynamic data. And so this can be URL and boom, there we go. Now we have this key and value. It's marked as private, but we want to unmark it as private. This makes it so we can send different values to this API from the front end, different URLs, right? And then for this value, we're just going to go to my YouTube channel where you watch this. Now we'll pull up a video right there grab that URL and we're going to put it right there. Okay. So it could just be any YouTube video really. Um, and you're going to put it right there. And one last thing, we want to use this as an action. And what that means is when we go to trigger this or call this API, we would then have an option within the workflows to call this, right? Rather than using it as data, which is like do a search for or get data from an API. And then we get the data from this, right? So we want that action to call it. I'll show you how what I mean and how this connects in bubble when we actually build the workflows in bubble. But for now, we still need to build more of our API and build chip. All right. 
So we have our root URL and we have our first key and value that we're sending, which is the YouTube video, okay? And with any good SEO optimized article, you also need to optimize it around a keyword or two, right? So that means we also want to send some keywords that we should be including in the writing for this article. And we don't have that in place right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another node. And this node is going to be the same node as above, the get query param. I'm going to add that node. And for this query param, we're just going to use keywords, okay? That's just, that's all we're going to use for it. And we're going to make the URL above, we're going to make that required because we need that. We're also going to make this required, okay? And so now we have the keywords. And so what we need to do for this now is now we need to add this to the URL that we're hitting, all right? And so whenever you add a second and or any value after the first, it is an and symbol instead of the question mark symbol. So now it's and keywords equals keyword, right? And now that exposes this value. And just for this demo, I'm just going to say, we're going to start off with no code. That is the keyword that we want to optimize this article that we will be writing around. Okay. And again, it's not private, right? We want to be able to send different keywords for every single thing that we will be writing for this blog. Okay. So we have this root URL and we're sending two values, the URL and the keywords with it. Fantastic. So there we go. We have this, 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 this. Now the fourth step is what we're using to actually get the YouTube captions. And now this is an NPM package. And this is one of the special things about using BuildShip is they already have this NPM package hosted and we could just leverage it in a pre-built mechanism, right? Which would also make it really hard to do if you're in just bubble world. So by having this available to us, it then gives us access to the subtitles for that YouTube video that we are targeting and returning those subtitles to us. Okay. Now, if I go into click this play button, it's going to allow me to run the node, right? And so if I want to just paste the YouTube video that I had, and the language is going to be EN for English, right? And if I could just do this, which then allows me to preview what this node will do in an individual fashion, right? And so then here I am, I get these results, right? And I can see here that the results are coming through accurately, right? So I have my text here, here are five ways that you can make whatever. But you're also getting all this data, the start and the duration and all that kind of stuff. And now the goal here is to be able to take this key, which is subtitles, and this property name, which is text, take all of these strings, extract them from this response, and then join them all together. So that way, we're getting a clean bit of subtitles back that does not contain any of our start and end durations for that, right? And that's exactly what this next step is doing. But Instead of using this one, I actually want to use another node. And this other node is going to be, it's going to be the JSON and it's going to be the concat property values. Okay. So we're going to remove this one. And for this key here, we're going to say subtitles and the property name is going to be text, right? Because what I've shown you above here is this is our key. So we're looking for this and then the property name is text and we're going to pull all of the text from here. Okay. So this step, will take the response of this and it will take all of the text and it will extract it and then join it all together in this step. A really important step, right? Now we get into our actual open AI bit, right? And we're gonna do two different open AI bits. We're gonna have one open AI call that will be to generate the body of the article, okay? And this is where we are going to feed it the subtitles and the list of keywords. And we're going to say, hey, now go and create me a body of the article based around this context, right? And so first and foremost, you will need to create an API key for this. And you can go to openai.com. And within there, you'll need to log in. And then you'll have to go to the API section. And you'll need to create your own API keys there, okay? Now, I'm not going to do that because I don't want you to see my API keys. But you go into OpenAI, you do that, and you have to create your own API key. Just one point uh, that I want to clarify, because I struggled with this in the beginning when I was setting this up. In order to get access to GPT-4 Turbo, which is the model that we're using here, you actually have to fund this API key, meaning you have to put $5 on that API key to get some credits to it, which will then give your API key 
access to this model. Okay. So unfortunately you do have to spend $5 to open AI in order to get access to this model for your API key. All right. So there we go. We have that. And so you're going to take your API key and you can see here that I already have my API key added because I've already done this previously. So it, it's there and it's safe. Now I can look at my system prompt. All right. And I see in the system prompt, they've already created this for me, right? Which is pretty cool. And it says, you are a professional technical content writer who writes SEO friendly blogs on a given context transcript, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So you're going to write this and you will also be provided with a list of SEO keywords that need to be included in the technical blog, right? Which is also what we did above here, right? Our list of keywords, right? And so we're going to feed the subtitles and the keywords to this step. So for this step, we are going to, if I go and click the editor, it's saying, where are we getting the information to, you know, include this user prompt, right? And it's going to be from our concat property value. And for the keywords, where are we getting that? We go variables, get query keywords. That's it. There we go. Perfect. So we're sending it the user prompt, which is our subtitles. And we're also sending it the keywords that we included in the URL. Okay. Now we have all the rest of this is good. And you'll see that we have this return JSON, right? And right now we have it set up as false. And I think that's going to be okay for us. I also want to take, show you something over here, this on fail, continue true or false. So what this allows you to do in this builder is say, if this step fails, then you can create a sub workflow within it in order to kind of like do a debugging or a retry mechanism to create error processes included in this node to self-correct itself at any point, which I thought was also really cool that you can do that within this and it allows you to all right, if this fails, all right, now we're going to create a sub workflow to check why it failed and correct itself in a programmatic manner, right? So we have this step to create the GPT body. Now we also want to create another step to create the GPT title, okay? And so what we're going to do for that is we're going to do, we could do open AI again, but instead I'm just going to copy, all right? And then I'm going to add my node and I want a node from paste from clipboard right there. I'm going to allow that, okay? And there it is. Now I have that. And I'm just going to take it up here. And I'm going to drag it in my property element tree right here. Okay. So you can see the order up here. You can see the body, the text. And now I'm going to update this to the title. Okay. And again, for the title, I'm going to be using my same open AI key. All right. Which actually my open AI key is the GPT-4 one, not the open A one. Okay, there we go. And then for the system prompt here, it's going to be a different system prompt, right? Because now we're just saying, hey, we want it to have a title. So we're going to delete this. I'm going to pre-enter this. And it says you will be provided with an auto-generated YouTube video title. And your job is to take the given text and make it a good SEO optimized title. Okay. So we got that. Our user prompt. We got our keywords. That's great. And we have that. All right. And so we're doing pretty good here. If we look at it, we say we have our API call. We have our query parameters that are sending for the URL and the keywords. We have our NPM package for the YouTube that's extracting the subtitles. We have our concate mechanism, which is taking the subtitles and putting it into a clean JSON format. Then we're sending that subtitle in a clean JSON format to this GPT. I'm going to double check the system prompt because I think it's asking to log you will be provided. And then I just want to say that I'm going to add on to this and say, please provide a raw text value in return. Essentially, I could say, you know, please provide this return as like a markup. Or in this case, I just want raw text, right? So we have the OpenAI GPT body, the title, and then the return here. Now I'm going to go in, into this return and I need to get a couple of things. And so I'm actually going to write a little bit of JavaScript here. And I'm going to open it up. All right. I'm going to go next line here. I'm going to say my body is going to be my variable for my open AI body generator. Okay. It's going to be that object right there. And then I'm going to do a comma. And then my next one is going to be a title, right? And now this is going to be my title. And so this is formatting the response that we are going to get back in the API call when we hit that API call in bulk, right? And so we want our body, we want our title, 
And I think that's just about it for now. And so I think that should be good. And so what we now need to do is we need to ship this. All right, so I'm gonna ship it. So now to make it live, and then I'm going to try it on Bubble and see what we run into. See if we get it right in the first try or not. All right, it has shipped. I already have this endpoint, that's great. I'm gonna go into my Bubble editor and I'm gonna see, okay, I got this, I'm using this action. The data type is gonna be JSON, that's great, all right. I think one last thing that we wanna do here is capture the response headers. And then let's try to initialize this thing and ah, all right, let's see what we got here. That, that was quick. Label, get query, message, cannot find. Okay, so something is going on with our get query param. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to update this path a little bit. I'm going to say blog generation. Okay, and then I am going to then, I need to pull in the updated root URL. Maybe this is just running into a problem because I've done this already. And it's a similar endpoint. I'm just going to ship that now. That's updated. Fantastic. Okay, I updated that. Let's try it again. I think this might work now. I think it's working. I think that root URL was a little bit off or wasn't unique because I already had something like that in my application. And so I think that would have been a me thing. But for now, let's see. It's running through the steps of the workflow. It's hitting our double AI response. And we should see a box pop up here with our initialization values soon. There it is. Look at this. But it's actually not coming through like we want it to do. Because you could see here that if we go and show the raw data, so body, certainly since this list of SKO keywords appears to be missing or not provided, I will provide the draft without them. So it looks like we draft, we missed something here in our title and our blog articles, all right? So since a list of SEO keywords appears to be missing, okay? So that's, that's helpful in this debugging this process. So we have our keywords, okay? Our keywords, and we're supposed to be sending this with it, but we're probably just not feeding it into this mechanism correctly. And so our keywords here, here it is. What this is telling me is that we're not actually getting the value of that, right? So I didn't actually send the value. I sent the object and the keywords, all right? So I'm going to get out of this. I'm going to get the keywords. I'm going to send the value, okay, instead of the object. I think that's going to do it. So let's ship it. All right, and let's try this again. The mistake that I made there is I sent the actual full object, which is, you know, I, I believe it's going to be like this whole string rather than just the value of the keywords that it needs for that article. And since we have this as in saying that it, the keywords is required uh, in our process, then it needs those keywords. And if we don't send the value correctly, then it's not going to be able to do what it was doing. And that's kind of what the API call was telling us. So almost there. We've already got this URL working right because we've seen the initialization and that last error code just essentially told us that, hey, the keywords weren't coming correctly. So now we've updated the mapping for the keywords to just send the value instead of the object. So let's wait a couple more seconds and let's see if this is going to be the winner for us. There it is. Ah, not quite. That's, I mean, we're, that's somewhat working, but it's not actually taking the value from our video like we want it to be. Ah, uh, look at this. On this concat, we got to feed it from the YouTube extractor. All right, let's initialize again. There we are, ladies and gentlemen. We go to this raw data, body, top five global plugins, and this is related to everything of this video. And then my title. All right. Sorry that wasn't as clean as I was hoping for, but we built what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight steps of this workflow. And so remember this runs sequ sequential, okay? And you need to make sure that you're taking the values from the step above and feeding it into the proper step. And especially in our open AI body, 
we weren't feeding some of these values properly. And again, you could feed the object or the value. And especially in the SEO keyword situation, you want to feed the actual value itself, right? Uh, you can also do this in parallel. And so, for example, say we wanted to split out this body and this title, we could run those in a parallel fashion and then bring it back. BuildShip allows you to do a lot of really cool features and get really complex with this, with sub workflows, parallel workflow, sequential workflows. So whatever you want to do, you could do. And say we wanted to add another API call to call the YouTube API directly and get the thumbnail and then add that into the return. We could do that. Like it's that powerful. And one last thing I want to show you before we head into bubble land to complete the final part of this is you can also create a node with AI. And so you can just say, hey, I need a node that's going to take a value from a URL and grab this or whatever. And so also going to use AI to build nodes for you. So you have pre-built nodes, you have uh, a ton of different types of nodes, and then you have AI built nodes. And you can combine all these together to create really scalable, fast workflows. You can test it all in here. You have version control in here. You have your logs in here. You can invite people to join your projects in here and you can ship it, right? This also integrates with ROI, the database. So if you ever want to use this as a database and workflow builder, you can as well as that's a native integration, or you could use Superbase or Firebase or other integrations into the databases or just Bubbles database as well. However you want to use it, just know that this is a, a great workflow builder generally for like a use case like this, especially with Bubble, where Bubble when working with, you know, open AI and stuff, you have some timeout stuff. It takes long. It, it's hard. If something fails, you don't really know in that, you know, you can figure it out, but it's hard. And so when you get into big workflows like this that are combining many different API calls, taking JSON values, extracting and joining those and doing all that stuff using NPM packages, a tool like BuildShip is really important. And so that's why I wanted to use it for this tutorial. But we have finished this part of it. Now I'm going to bring you into Bubble. We're going to create the front end part of it to tie all of this together, okay? So we are going to start with our database creation and we are going to be creating a blog. Okay. And so the new type that we need is a blog. And with all blogs, you have a title and that title is going to be a text title. And then you're going to have the body and that body is going to be text as well. Right. And then you're going to have an image and an image, and then you can add tags and stuff like that. That's cool. Right. And so most of your blog pages would be mostly a repeating group. Right. And in this repeating group, it would be this blog. And we just do a do search for and call all the blogs. OK. Now, the problem with this is that. The blog article and the data type right here has this body and this body has a lot of unstructured text and it's really heavy. OK. And so I don't like to have any of my blog articles that show like just four fields to contain all that text. Right. It's it's just not good. And so what I'm going to do here instead is I'm going to create a different data type for that. And that data type is going to be a satellite data type. All right. And it's going to be the blog satellite. And that blog satellite is going to show us the image. It's going to show us the title. Text. And it could show us, you know, if we wanted to do like a summary of it, we could do that text. And then finally, we need to link it back to the parent blog. Okay. And that parent blog would be that blog. And then we'll go to this blog and we'll link it to the satellite, right? Satellite. And you'll know that in this satellite, I did not include the body, right? I don't need that. That's way too heavy. So I'm going to go back to this blog listing. This is going to be a blog page and then we're going to create an article page, right? And in this blog listing page, we can have a text and and actually, let's set up the data source first. So it's going to be instead of blog, it's going to be blog satellite. It's going to be blog satellite. And then this text, it's going to be our blog satellites title. Right. And then let's just format this for us. We can just do a column. And within that, we can get out of our fixed here. We don't want anything fixed. Column as well. Right. And then I'm just going to take this. I'm going to put it into a group, another column group. All right. And now if I get into it here, I see I have that text and I can copy this and I'm going to paste this. All right. Now I have this group and I'm just going to add a little bit of padding 24, 24, 24, 24. I'm going to add some row spacing and some gap spacing. 
row for now it's, it's 12. All right, and just formatting this to make it really easy to add all my other stuff. So I got my title. My title is gonna be my H1 here, right? And then I have, this is gonna be my summary. And this summary is just gonna be like some lorem text or something like that. And I'll show you how we're gonna, you know, summarize it, concate it a little bit. So we're not showing the full body, we're just showing a little bit of a snapshot of what it is. And then let's actually add our title as well. I mean, sorry, our image as well. And so that's gonna be the blog satellites image, right? And we're just gonna have this as a stretch. And let's go to our fixed aspect ratio. We're gonna do 1920 by 1080 here. Okay. And so here we are, we have our blog listing. I'm gonna just make this all centered for now. Make this centered make that centered and center as well. And we're just gonna have this really simple um, repeating group that is centered in our page. It's gonna show everything, okay? So we have that. Now let's also go and create an article page. So it's gonna say article. And this page is gonna be using the current page block, okay? And we're gonna be sending the blog to it. We're gonna click on this article page. We're gonna set the content and it's gonna be the blog this time, okay? And then I'm gonna to go to a column, right? And on this, we're gonna have a text up here. And then it's gonna be my blog text, current page blog article title, right? And that's also gonna be my H1. And I can make that centered, give it to my fixed width here. Maybe max this out at 768, give it of this min height, okay? And now I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna copy, and then I'm gonna paste. So I got my next one. And this is gonna be my blog body, okay? And now for my body, I'm gonna go back down to my body text here, right? And then we have that. Now I'm gonna take both of these. I'm just gonna right click and I'm gonna group into a column. And now I'm gonna add my gap spacing here. So about 24, all right? So now I have my group, it's gonna be my G blog. All right, so I got that, that. Now I need an image for this, okay? Create an image here. And this is gonna be my blog image. And again, this is going to be fixed uh, aspect ratio of 1920 by 1080, because that's the size of the YouTube thumbnails that we're using. All right. And that's pretty good. That's pretty good. All right. So now we can go back to our index page. And what we're going to do is we're going to open our property editor. And we're going to essentially say that we're going to add a workflow and say that when you click on this, we're going to go to the article page. And you need to send the blog to the article page because there's a there's a data type set there. So it's a current self blog arc article satellite. And then we're going to say the parent blog because it needs that parent blog, right? So th this is where it allows us to have a really fast blog satellite loading screen because you're not including any of the body text. And when you click on this blog satellite, it's going to load the parent blog where it's okay to load that body text because it's just one item, okay? So we have this, that's great. I'm going to, I think that's fine for now. Let's build another page and it's going to be a create blog page, okay? And on this create blog page is where we're actually going to use our inputs to add for the video URL. So this is going to be a video URL, okay? Input video URL, I'm going to copy and paste that. All right, next up, I'm going to have my keywords, right? So keywords that I want to send. And then let's see, let's see. I'm gonna switch this away from fixed because we never use fixed, it's always column. All right, and then we'll do some gap spacing. That'll be 24 and we'll just center this, center this. Okay, and now we need a button here. And button right around there. Great blog. Oops, my fault, go back here. We're gonna do a layout, we're gonna center that. All right, so there we go. We have our video URL, our keywords that we're sending because remember, we need to send this URL and the keywords. And so that's why we set up those two inputs, okay? So now in the create blog, we're gonna edit workflow and we're gonna create the actual blog itself, okay? And now what we're gonna do for this is first we gotta hit the API, all right? And so I'm gonna type an API and since I use this in as an action and now shows up here, right? So again, this is action. So it shows up in my workflows there. So API, 
So I'm going to do that. So what am I going to send? And again, since I make this not private, I get these values here. If this was private, I would not get the input. So the value for this is going to be the video URL. And then the, the value for the keywords is going to be the input keywords, input keywords and that value. Okay. Now from here, what we want to do is we want to create the blog in the blog satellite. Okay. And matter of fact, I don't actually want to do this on the front end because it, it does take about 30 seconds. And if a user were to navigate, it would corrupt that flow. So instead I'm going to actually just build this in the back end, right? And I'm going to create a new workflow. And this is going to be my create blog article. I do not need to expose it publicly. I don't need any of this stuff, but I do need my URL, right? And I also need my keywords because that's what I will be sending, okay? And this may be a list if we want more than one keyword, but for now, let's just keep it single. And then I'm gonna call the API from back here now, and I'm gonna use the parameters from the workflow. So it's gonna be URL and it's going to be key keywords, okay? And now I'm gonna create my thing. So I'm gonna create a new thing and it's gonna be a blog, right? And that blog is going to be the body and it's gonna be the results of step one, and it's gonna be the body. And we have these formatted because that's how we formatted our response right here. So remember, we set the body and title back and we're using headers. And so we're getting that body and title back. And now for the next thing, we want the title, right? And we want, we start in that the title. All right, what else do we got here? Satellite, we don't have an image yet. So we actually do need an image and we'll, we'll send that on the front end, okay? So for now, that's good. Now we also need to create a satellite for this. So let's go and create a satellite. And the parent blog is gonna be results of step two. The summary could be the results of step two body, and then we'll trunicate it to maybe 50 characters, all right? And the title is also going to be results of step two, the title, okay? And we'll also take the, the image and we'll take the image from results steps two as well which we don't actually have yet, but we will feed that. All right, so there is our workflow. Let's go back to our front end here. All right, create blog, sorry, it's a create blog. Okay, so let's schedule our workflow. And at the workflow is gonna be the create blog workflow. So we're actually gonna get rid of this. And the scheduled day is gonna be the current date. The URL is our video URL, just like we did before, video URL. And the keyword is our keywords. Import keywords, okay? And let's just do one more thing. Let's add a picture uploader here too, right? Picture uploader. There we go. And we're going to put this in the center. There we go. And so now when we go back here, we can also send the picture uploader value. So we need to now allow it to have an image. All right. Now we can go back to our create blog. All right. Boom, boom. Now we have this image and this is going to be the picture uploader's value. All right. Oh, shoot. We forgot to do back on workflow, create blog and image right there. Okay. And image. So I think this should do it guys. I think this should do it. So now let's go to our create blog and we could preview this on the front end. And so let's preview it. All right, so our video URL, I have that. My keywords, no code. I'll upload this graphic. Great. And I'm gonna create that blog article, boom. So that's gonna be created. I need to reset these values, but now what I wanna do is I wanna go to my actual blog page where it lists my blogs. And I want to show this, right? Because I want to wait for this to come up here. So I want to know when this happens, right? And so we can also check our database to see when anything is created. And there it is. And there we go. So now here's our blog. And we click into it. And we go to our article. And here's our blog article, our title, our image, and all of our text. And that was just created with a video URL, some keywords and an image. And we just did all of that. Now you see there's still a little bit like of a markdown here. We can work and correct that and we can perfect this, but you can also adjust the prompt if 
you want to make it longer or shorter, you can add steps if you want to send this result to like an SEO checker. And if that SEO checker doesn't give you like an A, then to, you know, send it back to GPT and say, hey, we need more kind of thing. Like you could take this as far as you need to take it. But we just built a tool that allows you to take a YouTube video and convert it into an SEO optimized blog article with an SEO optimized title, which you can now use to create tons of blog articles from any of the videos you've created. It wasn't seamless, but it was pretty close. I hope this is really valuable for you. I know I'm going to be using this for my own stuff. I got 100 videos and zero blogs, so I'm going to start cranking out some blogs. If you have any questions, comment back on this video. I'll do my best to help you. Either way, you got to check out buildship.app. It's really impressive. I'm a bubble geek. And what you can do here is just, it opens up a lot of doors, especially at the higher end of bubble where you really need to get very specific about the APIs, you know, getting your return JSON, you know, finding that, joining that, hitting several different APIs, maybe in parallel, your on fail workflows and creating sub workflows for that. It just gets to a level of workflows that bubble doesn't quite get you. I mean, you could probably make happen, but it's just better in this context for those very advanced things. And they also have all these templates for you to choose from, which is a ton of really, really cool stuff. So check out buildship.app. Drop a comment below if you enjoyed this video. Otherwise, you have now a blog tool that you can spin up your own SaaS for. You can use it for your internal tools. I'm going to just start going off and building my own blog article. And I hope this tutorial was very helpful for you. And I'll see you on the next one. See ya.